Boxing Ego here. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon on the top of your screen to get notified when the latest new content drops. One. Jamal Charlo, Lions Only, responds to Abel Sanchez about his fighter Gennady Golovkin. Stay tuned. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest inboxing. If you want to become part of the gang gang, notification gang, please hit the bell icon. Shout out to the Super Chats, channel donations, the Venmo donations, and the Patreon family. We working now. Keep running your mouth. Keep running your mouth. Lions only, Jamal Charlo. He was supposed to be fighting on next week's card, Deontay Wilder versus Luis Ortiz. That fight has been pushed back. Once again, I repeat, Charlo's fight for the number one contender spot at the WBC with the WBC rankings against Hugo Centeno Jr. has been pushed back. I believe April 21st is the new date. Hugo Centeno Jr. says he suffered a rib injury during the last week of training camp and as a result, it got postponed. Now, they did a conference call back before this rib injury from Centeno Jr. was reported when everyone thought the fight was happening next week. And Charlo had a very interesting statement. I wanna talk about that. He responds to Abel Sanchez talking about, because he's, he's made some comments about wanting to fight Canelo or Triple G. He's saying he's the man at middleweight and he's just looking for the opportunity to prove it. So in response to Abel Sanchez, this is what Charlo had to say. I don't give a shit about what Abel Sanchez thinks about me. He ain't in that ring taking shots from Triple G. He can't know about me till he comes to Houston and finds out. So... He's basically saying, keep running your bell, keep running. No, he's basically saying, you, you're you the trainer. You know what I mean? Like, basically fall back, you're the trainer. You're not the one that's getting in there. It's, it would be me and Triple G. And, I mean, I agree with that. A lot of times you get the, the trainer who's more boisterous. Like, I don't really, I never really hear Golovkin say the stuff that Abel Sanchez is saying. You know what I mean? Abel Sanchez is like, this, this, and, and the third. And then, you know what I mean? Tri Triple G's pretty... Humble and quiet. Maybe it's a language barrier. I don't know. But he's not really saying too, too much. So, as far as Charlo, if he gets past Hugo Centeno Jr. now in April, I would love to see him fight the Canelo Triple G winner. And, in fact, I would say he deserves it. Like, just based on the fact that the W... He is not in charge. Charlo's not in charge of the WBC. So, if they gave him a number two spot and said fight Jorge Sebastian Highland and the motherfucker had a wooden leg or whatever y'all talking about right and then he knocks him out and then they say the WBC says hey fight Hugo Centeno Jr. he's the other ranked guy up there with you and then Hugo Centeno Jr. pulls out with the rib injury then they postpone the fight giving both fighters more time to prepare and if he gets past him then let's see it you know what I mean and I've used this example time and time again it's oh so funny how boxing fans all of a sudden, they turn into promoters when it's a threat to a fighter that I believe that they like. You know what I mean? So in this case, it's Triple G. Not saying Charlo absolutely beats Triple G, but what I am saying is it's a good fight. And if I suffered through fights with Adama, 154 pounders like Gabe Rosado, who Jamal's brother beat, Jermel, right? Um, fights with Ishida, who was a 154 pounder moving up. Fights with Willie Monroe, who didn't really have a sensational resume, hasn't been a champion, six knockouts, right? We've watched those fights. Dominic Wade, because he was a mandatory, even though he's coming off a draw with a 40-year-old Sam Solomon who got destroyed by Jermaine Taylor, has double-digit losses, and was about 40-something when he fought against Dominic Wade. And Dominic Wade beat a 40-year-old Sam Solomon with double-digit losses and he beat him via split decision right before fighting Gennady Golovkin. And that's what made him a mandatory for Gennady Golovkin. And Golovkin's team took the fight, right? These are facts. Box record, Wikipedia, Google it, check it. Check my work, you know what I mean? To make sure I cross my T's and dotted my I's, right? If you don't think any of what I just said adds up or checks out. So if we watch those types of fights, it wasn't always just Jacobs and... Canelo, you know, I mean, the, the last two fights Golovkin has given us, which were good fights against very good com, um, combatants and opponents, right? If I watch Golovkin fight a welterweight and kill Brook, 
with no tune-ups, no acclimating to the division, then you bet your ass a guy who, who is ranked through the WBC in a spot if he gets past Hugo Centeno Jr., I would love to see that, especially when I think it'll be a good fight. You know what I mean? When, listen, again, I'm going to keep saying this. For all the people counting out Jamal Charlo saying, oh, it doesn't make sense. He doesn't sell this, that, and, and the other. Where were those same people when it was announced that the Chris Eubank Jr., the negotiations fell apart, so Kel Brook was going to step in a welterweight? You know what I mean? At least we're not talking about a welterweight. We're talking about a full-bodied, pause, um, six-foot-plus Jamal Charlo, who has momentum, who was a champion in his previous division. Him and his brother have been putting on some highlight reel moments and, and knockouts. He's calling for the fight. You know what I mean? So where's the problem? I haven't really seen Kell Brook too much before the Golovkin fight was announced and negotiated or whatever, um, where he was just like calling out Golovkin like Jamal Charlo was doing. You know what I mean? So you guys got to stop with the excuses. I would love to see the fight. I think it's a good fight. Let me know who would win that fight. Drop your thoughts in the comment section. But I mean, like I said, if you can justify a Dominique Wade being a mandatory and getting a shot, then how can you not justify Charlo being a mandatory and getting a spot? Especially when Charlo, career-wise, even if it was at 154, he had better names than Dominique Wade. You know what I mean? Beating K9 Bundridge when he was champion. You know what I mean? And beating guys like uh, Julian J. Rock Williams, who people thought Charlo was ducking. Those are more significant than the Sam Solomon or the names that Dominique Wade had previously beaten before facing Golovkin. You know what I mean? So, Ego's army stand up. Those those same talking points aren't gonna aren't gonna hold up. There's gonna be a pressure, and I don't want to just oh Charlo should fight Danny Jacobs. No, Charlo is in line. Danny Jacobs has no belt. It's a good fight, but he has no belt, and he's already fighting a guy that beat who Charlo is fighting, Hugo Centeno Jr. He's fighting the Soul Kick or whatever his name is. So he's with the WBC route. That's what he's been fighting for. He's been fighting these eliminators to get in position to fight for the WBC belt. So it doesn't make sense to all of a sudden, the lighter, the ladder you've been climbing up, just jump off of it to fight Daniel Jacobs who doesn't have a belt right now, right? It makes sense to keep going on the path that you've been on and keep climbing up the ladder where you could get a title shot in a new division, which is what you say you want to do, right? Period. Lions only. Shout out to Charlo for at least just wanting the fight. You know what I mean? And see, this is what you say. This is what the fans say they want until it comes time to happen against their favorite fighter. Oh, it's the best versus the best. Okay, then let's see it. Golovkin, if he beats Canelo, he's definitely the best at middleweight. Charlo, even though he has, um, he doesn't have many fights, he, he's definitely a threat at middleweight. You know what I mean? If he were to fight Demetrius Andrade, Danny Jacobs, Billy Joe Saunders, right? Canelo, you would have people picking Charlo over those guys, right? Whether he can do it or not, you would. It would be split. It wouldn't just be like he, like a bum fighting against Daniel Jacobs, where you're like, I give them no shot, right? Right. Make sure you smash the like button as always. Hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video is Ego. Signing off. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.